good morning. This is not my park. Um, hold on. But I do have my little espresso. But this is different. This is at the residence of the president of Israel, Reuven Rivlin. Hello, Gerald. I'm live. Um, we, I've been on this uh, tour organized by, well, tour, event, conference, one day, this, that, and the other, by the press office, the General Press Office of Israel, GPO. Very good. Um, interesting. Lots of international Jewish journalists. Uh, this is the Jewish media you've been, you've been haranguing me about. Uh, and we, I was yesterday on a bus tour of Yudhavé Shamron. We toured the wall, or the separation fence, and the bit that's a wall, in fact, with a general who was largely responsible for building it. Told us amazing stuff, which I will kind of disseminate as I go along in my, my periscopes as they come up. Uh, I, learned, I learned lots of new things there. The care, the attention, the way, the way in which it was built and the fact that the, the holes that are at the top of the concrete slabs, they're there so that one day we can lift those slabs out of the way easily and put them away. That's the general's hope. I, I think, you know, I take a slightly different view of the long-term prospects of solving this. Um, uh, we then also, we, we met with some actual Palestinians. In fact, one guy I know, he, was, he, he helped fix up my trip to Daisha refugee camp with Tommy Robinson, and he was doing the translation for another fellow who lives in a, in a village, uh, an Arab village, in the middle of uh, the Gush Etzion block. So, you know, and, you know, he, he talked about how just so many of them would just like to get along with these people, get along with the Jews. Uh, uh, and... and we met the mayor of Ifrat, who's an amazing guy, Oded Ravivi. Um, we were in his offices. I tweeted some stuff from there. I was in these municipal offices in Ifrat, and the thing that struck me was how beautifully, um, how nicely renovated they are. And this is not normal in, I'm turning around so we get all the pr presidents of Israel. I'm standing next to here, here and let's stand next to Chaim Weizmann whose autobiography my family has some part in, but that's very, it's very tenuous. Chaim Weizmann here, first president of Israel. Um, anyway, we, we were in these offices of the um, uh, Efrat, the municipality. They're beautiful. All the wires are hidden. The, the conference room is nice and neat and tidy and the walls were nicely painted. And, and walking through it, the office is were clean and tidy and the, and, the, and it struck me that all the other municipal offices I've been to in Israel have been a bit of a mess by comparison and I see this as a reflection of the pride in which those people have hey 33 in the morning this is in the morning in Jerusalem Israel at the home of the president of Israel and I'm Brian of London anyway that the care that the mayor of Ifrat shows about his municipal offices and the care in that community there is a pride there and these people are there to stay and this 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 is obvious self-obvious to anyone what we actually really do need to do is take away any hope that those people are moving because all these NGOs that, that spread uh, lies or try to fight legal battles or find some Arab who once planted a tree on a piece of land 20 years ago and, and therefore claim that he's been farming it. This nonsense has to end. And, and the reason that nonsense exists, and I'll tell you more about this in later periscopes, is because Israel failed to failed to take control. We just, we never asserted ourselves and said, yeah, we're home. This is ours. We're back. That's it. Give up. And we never sought victory. We never claimed or found victory. And um, I think victory is what we need to assert. And when we have that, the Arabs will be quieter and they'll be better off. If they're not fighting us, we won't be fighting them. Uh, it, that's the way round it has to work. You know, we, it's such a truism, but if we lay down our arms, there'll be dead Jews. If they laid down their arms, there would be peace. That's absolutely sure. Whether it's annexing Judea or Samaria, I just, I don't know if the language exists to say what we need to do, but we have to normalize our presence there. We have to absolutely assert that it's never gonna end. 
Uh, we're back there. It's where we should be. And um, I will continue to sip my president's coffee uh, in the garden of the president of Israel. And um, this guy, Chaim Weizmann, he was a chemist, actually. And he went to Manchester. I'll tell a little bit of his story. And the reason why I know this story is because I've actually read his book. It's called Trial and Error, in which he describes, actually, he says the greatest impediment he um, the greatest impediment he faced when setting up or trying to establish the Jewish state of Israel was rich, assimilated British Jewry. They were trying to stop him. And he was the guy, the, 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 okay, my small part is that he went to Manchester uh, and he knew, didn't know the language, he knew, didn't know anybody except one person. He knew a, he, he knew a printer. And that printer is vaguely related to me. And that printer, that printer then um, introduced Weizmann to a chap in London who was instrumental in introducing him to Balfour, Lord Balfour. And that's how the Balfour Declaration got started. And so, so had he not been hosted in Manchester by a, a distant relative of mine, who had then introduced him to the right person who knew how to get him to Balfour, uh, things could have been very different. Not that the Balfour Declaration established Israel, it didn't. Um, Israel is established because Jews were gonna establish Israel, come hell or high water. Uh, but having bits of paper and pronouncements from the British along the way was helpful. But in the end, I don't think that's what established Israel. What established Israel is that this is where Judaism is com comes from. This is the indigenous homeland of the Jews. This is the indigenous homeland of Judaism itself. It sprung forth from that, what is today the Temple Mount, the site of our temple. The story of Adam and Eve happened here. The, the story of, well, Hebron. Um, the, the, the story of, of Abraham and Isaac that's on the Temple Mount. That's, that's why it matters to us. And it only matters to Muslims these days because it matters to us. Anyway, back to the uh, event. I've got lots of people to talk to and um, I'll periscope again when I get the chance. See you.